Hello everyone and welcome to this slightly different video where you're getting me in full 4K definition right now, which I know you don't want to. So we're going to jump to some background footage very quickly. Don't you worry. Now, this video is all about how to improve and RaceLogic have sent me their VBox sim uh, to look at and to review essentially and go through it. So we're going to look at that a little bit later on, but I thought it'd be kind of nice to talk about all the ways you can improve in racing games and sim racing as a whole because there are many ways to improve that you can do that are very easy and then they can build up and some will cost of course race logic off their vbox sim which has a cost to it what we're going to do first of all uh is actually just before i do that lessons and one-to-one -one tuitions i get comments and questions all the time just on that note i do review it all the time it's just a time thing that i it, you know it's very hard for me to do if they do come they will be very costly. I'm just going to put that out there now. Obviously, I do consultancy as a part of my professional work. And there's a very high cost there. So it's going to be a similar cost. Just putting that in there because I know people keep asking. That's where that is at the moment. So if you if it does come about, it's going to be costly. Just keep that in mind. There are plenty of ways to do this for free or different methods, as I say, with the race logic VBOX sim. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now let's get back into the video. So I'm going to talk about GT Academy 2011, first of all way back then the first time i got pretty serious about racing and i wanted to qualify for a competition gt academy is essentially esports that's what it was and 2011 was the year yan won obviously the movie came out uh, regarding yan's experience i am going to do a review on that and talk about some of the key highlights that were put in there obviously i did have a one-to-one -one session uh, with some of the creators of the movie uh, explaining different aspects of gt academy and what i experienced at the time to help them there um, so I can also explain some of the things that in the movie that you might not even realize happened and do relate to GT Academy very well. Anyway, back to this video. Uh, so one of the things I did in GT Academy to really build up my speed, so I had to get top 20 and I did make that. I think I was in the top 10 actually. Um, but in terms of GT Academy, each and every time I would go on for a session, which was normally about an hour, maximum an hour and a half. I did try and time limit myself because I was doing four sessions a day. I was at university, I had no job, I did four sessions a day. So you generally, it was morning, middle of the day, afternoon and evening. And what I would do is I'd write down my fastest lap of each session and write down the sectors of each session. And that is it. And I'd compare against them. I'd also compare against leaders, Tytech and Outburner. They were the two leading drivers in GT Academy generally. Tytech was the GOAT, essentially. The one that you would always try and reach. Uh, and yeah, he's, he's an awesome driver, Tytech. He would just jump in and go. And essentially, the, the guys as well, just to reference those French guys, they would all jump into lobbies as well and race without ABS on. And, and that would improve their braking. And that's where they really did, you know, they were the next level in terms of Gran Turismo at the time. So with GT Academy, I'd write down my fastest laps, my fastest sectors, and i compare. I would look at my best sectors and go, what did I do there? And I'd go back and watch the replay and see what I did. Did I take a different line? Did I do something slightly different? And I'd keep reviewing that and going over it. Now this can work on both pad and wheel because I got the fastest pad time in the world in GT Academy 2011. I then improved on a wheel in that uh, same competition as well by an extra tenth. So it does show you that and that's not a wheel versus pad issue. Uh, that was just essentially trying to get used to the wheel at the time. Uh, and obviously I was so used to the pad as well. The pad and wheel are very close together now in Gran Turismo. So don't worry about that. Anyway, I would compare each time I'd do a lap and I'd pick out the best bits and then I'd look to try and improve on that. Now, that's breaking down a lap, and that's something you need to do. So you, I broke it down by sector. One thing you can do is break it down by corner. Maybe you log little time areas that you can log. So I've talked about time reference points in the past on laps, where I use a gantry or a colored fence just to reference a time. So if I know I'm there at that time, I know that I'm on a fast lap or a slow lap. So I break the lap down even more. So breaking the lap down to sectors or maybe even subsectors or even corners is really helpful. And that's one thing you should do is focus on one sector or one corner if you're really, really struggling. Focus on one corner because it honestly, it will help massively. And that's why you pick out reference points. If you get consistent on a given corner and you know where you can improve, you know where you're breaking each time, your sector times are identical or very similar, you can start to go, aha. I know where I need to improve now. So when I do my car profiles, for example, I know roughly where the brake markers are instantly. So I can do those 10 laps and know, uh, and I can look to improve each time. So if I'm braking a bit too early for a corner, I can brake a bit later, a bit later. Oh no, I've pushed the car too far. I need to bring it back. And I can start to do that each time. And that's when I talk about optimum times and things like that. So you're comparing against yourself and comparing against others in terms of your sector's times and breaking down a corner. What can you do next? Well, you can compare against 
the fastest laps. You can actually watch their laps and see what they're doing differently. Maybe they're taking a completely different line. That's the great thing about watching the fastest lap replays. You can see what they're doing very quickly. Oh, they're cutting a bit more of that corner. Oh, they're breaking a bit later there. Oh, they're doing a corner site differently. You can look at that very quickly and it's great. You know, it's a nice, easy way to learn and improve uh, and really, really get up to speed quite quickly. Maybe you've done those things now and now you're going, hmm, what do I do next? Ghosts. Not all, not all sims and games offer ghosts. Gran Turismo offers ghosts. Let's talk about ghosts. I've used ghosts throughout my time racing in esports on various games. Ghosts are very helpful. It's not for everyone because some people get put off by a ghost being right in front of you. But oh my word, a ghost helps and it helps a lot. So what I'd recommend is if you're going to use a ghost, I'll set it by 0.2 or 0.3. The reason for that is there is a delay while you're watching a ghost. Or if you're focusing on a ghost ahead of you, if they break and they're point 0.1 or you're right next to them, you're going to break later and you're going to outbreak yourself. So put point 0.2, point 0.3, and as they get into the distance, you can see where they break and then you can break at the same point. Follow the ghost, lap after lap after lap. If the ghost gets too far away, restart, try again. If it's a short lap, don't restart, just go around again. If you're like three or four seconds off the ghost already, don't restart the lap. Just try and get as close to the ghost as you can each time you do that first sector and then your laps will start to improve. The whole idea is you build consistency in the first sector, then the second sector. Same thing like I talked about earlier, breaking down a lap. If we focus on the ghost and just trying to beat it in one sector, that's fine. That's what I do if I'm going for world records. I focus on the ghost in one sector, usually sector one. How close can I get to the ghost in sector one? Oh, I'm ahead of it now. Right, I might offset it a bit more because it's getting too close to me and then I'll go for sector two. And that's how some people beat world records even now. It's why they don't show their live laps and they show the replay laps. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong at all. You still beat the ghost. Fair play. Use the ghost. It's there to help you. Just offset it a little bit and off you go flying. Let's say you're in a game which doesn't offer ghosts or perhaps the event you're doing, you can't get ghosts and you're struggling even more, but you can save a replay. The next thing to do here is to do a lap comparison. So just to explain ACC, I sometimes take part in the eSport events. I don't play ACC all the time. I'm not the very best ACC player, but I can get up to a nice speed where I can compete at least in the eSports scene. So when I help out teams, so for example, I helped out FFS Racing at Spa in the SRO eSports 24 hour race. That's the biggest race on ACC. I had to get up to speed. So I was helping out FFS, I was basically the guy who's there if they need me in any way. So, you know, doing the graveyard shifts and things like that and helping out with strategy where I can. So what, I had, what I did, I jumped on the same track with my teammates and guess what? I saved the replay. I grabbed uh, Mike's lap, I grabbed my lap and I compared them. So what I did is I've got a bit of video editing software, which, you know, I edit videos, you're watching one now. Uh, I do a like for like and I make sure they're aligned at the start of a corner, mid corner. I can see if I'm up or down and the exit of the corner and I can see where I'm losing time. I, it highlights very quickly corners where I'm losing a big amount of time and corners where I'm losing a small amount of time. Obviously, as the lap builds, you're gonna, that gap's gonna increase and extend. So if you can pick out a corner where you're getting a big gap and shrink it, guess what? You're getting closer to that lap time already. Way to improve and you can find out strengths and weaknesses. I'll show you what I mean now. Let's jump to that lap comparison I did versus Mike at SRO and I can explain it a little bit more. Right, so here we are then, me versus Mike. Okay, Spa, Frogsham, in the same Aston Martin, heading towards turn one. I've got it on 50% speed, which is what I do when I do these lap comparisons. And as I come into here, what I'm looking for are any differences. So you can see Mike's gone on the brakes. I'm not on the brakes yet, and yet I'm going one mile an hour quicker. So it's very clear to me that Mike is braking earlier. You can see they're at the exact same point based on that weather balloon. So we're going to come into here then and we start to slow the car down. And what we're looking for now is sort of apex speed. I'm not going to stop it this time as we go through here. 40, 39. I maintain a higher apex speed. But is that worthwhile doing? Do I have any struggles on exit? So what we do then is we review on the exit. And if you notice, Mike is a slight bit ahead. Even though he broke earlier and had a slower speed, he basically slower in, faster out. And you can see that there. It's very clear to me that... It's, it's, it's quite even, to be fair, but it's very clear that I could change my line. So we jump to Lake Home then, and this one is where the biggest difference is. You can see Mike's actually got more speed there, 169 versus my 168 as we come into here. We're breaking about the same point here as we go into the corner. 
get about looking for is any differences. Uh, I feel I turned in a bit too early and I've not got the car rotated enough. As I go through the left, Mike is using more of the curb on the left hand side. As we go over towards that left hand side, Mike's carrying far more speed than I have throughout this entire part of the corner now. As we go through this right hander and as we leave this corner, you can see Mike is far ahead at this point in time. We both use a lot of the exit there. And there is a big difference. This was one of the biggest differences I saw on the lap. And you can see there, it was just massive. Mid-corner, Mike was carrying so much more speed. So something for me to review and look at. And that's exactly what I did. Because I was losing a lot of time at Lake Home. And you could do this as well, you know. You don't need to get any paid video edited software. There's lots of free stuff out there. You can grab some recording software and literally look on a like for like on a given lap. And you could do this, you know. It's very time consuming though, don't get me wrong. Uh, and this is where the Race Logic V-Box Sim comes in. And we're going to have a look at that in a second. Again, looking at this, you know, Mike's carrying more speed going into this corner. Doing a lap versus lap comparison like this is worthwhile. Lots of people did it in the past in GT Academy. I did it as well. And it just worked because you could very quickly see the differences. You just have to look for them more with your eyes rather than having the data. And that's where we're going to jump to the Race Logic V Box Sim now. So we jump to the Race Logic V Box Sim then. So they sent me this piece of software, free of course. So just to let you know, I have been sent this for free. Uh, but you do have to pay for this. It's $99.99. And you get it on Steam, which I've got in the background for you. Now, once you've installed it, which is very easy to install, you're presented with the menu you see in front of you, okay? Now, this is the V-Box Sim in a nutshell. Uh, essentially, it will auto-detect get your game, which is very nice indeed. Um, it shows you the last file there because I've already used it. I'm doing this video after I've tried it out, of course. Uh, you got an output directory, which is where it records the video to. It chooses your screen. So I've got two screens, so it's picking display one. Technically, I've got three screens, and it recognizes that one is mirrored, which is good. I'm glad it does that. Uh, you see, it does high quality. Obviously, depending on the quality, it'll depend on how much of your CPU is used. Uh, and you can also do a test video as well to make sure it does go into there, which is exactly what I did. On the right hand side, we've got uh, literally a bit of information, what version I'm using. And you can have the game auto select or you can, you know, pick the game of choice there. And you can see all the games that are available to be used. I've got it on auto detect and it does detect instantly. It's absolutely fine. Uh, you've got different ways to use this as well, uh, but I'm just using it straight out of the box. Happy days. No worries. Off I go. There's a user guide there for a bit more information. You also need circuit tools uh, to have a look at analysis, and that's what we're going to use as well. So make sure you download that, install it, but then also run an update, okay? This is circuit tools. So this is what I was having a bit of a play with initially. Uh, lots on here to look at, of course. You see I've got all this information down on the left-hand side, uh, and we are going to look at that. I'm actually going to do a bit more of a detailed look into this and a comparison lap in just a second, but you do need this in there as well. You can see the circuit tools version up at the top and uh, yeah it's got lots of information on which we're going to delve into right now so what i did then is i jumped into one of the acc special events this is the mclaren 720s evo and this is brand hatch if you hadn't already guessed now what i've done is i've just jumped in with the aggressive setup i did adjust the pressures before well going out for this second run that i'm doing now essentially a run was three or four laps depending on how i felt in the car and what we did is we did this session and then we also did one with a cage, uh, cage, not a cage, a Coach Dave Academy setup. I will get that out there. Uh, and we're going to do a bit of a comparison and have a look at some of the inputs that the V-Box Sim actually offers. Because this also recorded, with the software open, it also recorded this, the footage. Not the one with my camera in, because that was OBS. So it can run at the same time as OBS, which is actually significant because some pieces of software do not allow you to do that. For example, when I have my family chat on Facebook, uh, the, I have to have OBS off, otherwise it doesn't work and it fails. We uh, go on to the Coach Dave Academy lap then, with a sneaky little merge there for you, and we're going to go towards the end of this one. You can see I have improved, which is to be expected, to be honest, because you do pay for the Coach Dave Academy setups, uh, and I've got access to them, which I do appreciate. Thank you, Dave, you're legend, as we head towards the final corner then. And uh, I did expect to improve over the aggressive setup. This setup felt far better. It actually felt a bit oversteery, to be honest. Uh, but as we head towards the line, what we're going to do now actually is jump to the circuit tools because it's the circuit tools where we're going to find out a bit more information. And we're back with circuit tools without anything on there. Obviously, I did show you with a session on previously. So what we're going to do is going to go to file load. Now, I can't remember which one this is. You do have an autoplay preview. Uh, but what I'm going to guess at is that it's going to be one of these last five. So if I put all of these in here... 
it's loading all of them together, which is pretty awesome, to be fair, actually. If you can look at that, you get all the data down here. That's pretty cool, actually. I was not expecting it to work like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's put them all together very nicely indeed. And I would argue that's actually put them at about the same place on circuit as well. If I'm not mistaken there, that is definitely at the same place on circuit. That is actually pretty awesome. So this is like a live review now that you'll get in here uh, on this finale of the video. That's pretty cool. It's got the laps on here as well. This is awesome. So I can see that on the left hand side and I can compare against the best laps in each of them as well. That is, that is pretty, pretty remarkable. Now for memory, it was this one that I'm particularly interested in. So can I close that then? It does get rid of it. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. That was the Coach Dave Academy first one. And then this is the adjusted pressures. So what we've got here then, we've got both of these side by side, which is also, it's amazing to put this together. So that saves a lot of time already if you are wanting to use this piece of software. Um, and uh, what we could do here is we can actually play along. Obviously it doesn't have sound, but we can see down here where we've got the literally braking and accelerating. So brakes down here, accelerating's there. What I'm actually going to do here is we'll just stop it there and you can see this. Look at this. Oh, it's so good. I actually really like that. Should we get rid of the speed or the delta? The delta time you can see here, this is where the difference is actually. Let's focus on this delta time actually. No, I'm not going to get rid of anything. We're going to watch this as it goes through. I don't know whether this lines it up or not, or whether it's just going to go through it and show you the differences as we leave that corner. As we get to here, um, that has definitely just moved them side by side. I'm pretty sure it has there. That, the, yes, it has indeed. But you can see here the delta difference there. So look, 17.4 to 17.6 as we continue down here. And again, looking, I want to look down here actually. Look at the break-in. So we've got the blue one, which is left. It's color coordinated, which is really nice actually. I really like that. Uh, and then we've got the red there, uh, which is obviously the right-hand side. So on the throttle, I'm on the throttle earlier with the blue one there and le less so on the red one. Now, this is significant because if you remember to what I just said while watching the laps, I said the Coach Dave Academy setup was a bit more oversteery. And you can see that here. I'm more confident on the throttle on the blue one than I am the red one. And that could be to do with traction control. There's more traction control on the blue one. But it shows in the data. Data is fact when you look at things like this. So this is actually really useful indeed. Uh, so let's continue on through the lap then. We're going to have a look at some braking. Do we have any really dodgy parts of braking? It's all very similar to be honest. You notice down here as we go into the brakes, uh, red one, we're coming off the brakes a bit earlier there as we continue on through. Full throttle on both, so the line should match here. Uh, and we've got this really weird part here coming up as we head towards the right-hander then. So let's stop it here. So we're coming in and it's going to match them up there, it looks like. I don't know how it does this. This is kind of magic, actually. I, I really like this. It takes a, a good hour to do a lap comparison properly, and this is just flying through it. This is great. Um, so coming into here, uh, literally what we're going to do then is just follow... what what's got, The blue looks like it's going to get a bit of oversteer and then catch here, where the red one is just straight on the throttle off and then back on so that's that suggests we get oversteer earlier on on the blue and then oversteer later on uh in the red and i can slow this down to a 0.25 let's have a look at this then as we go into here what's going to happen here is it playing through it's like it looks like it's struggling a little bit there oh there we go it's loading now uh maybe we can just rewind that a little bit and let's try that again see if that works yeah it's taking up a lot of power here because we're recording on OBS as well. So I'm not going to blame the software for that one. Uh, what we are going to do now, though, is we're going to just go back a little bit. There we go. It lines it up so well. How it does that is amazing. This is really good stuff. As we go into here then, and going into the right, and I couldn't really tell with the oversteer there. It just looks like I was bouncing the throttle a little bit. Yeah, it's just bouncing the throttle. There wasn't oversteer there on either of them, really. As we go through the next right-hander then, Again, yeah, nothing significant. I use more of the track on the right-hand side. In fact, looking at that, I did use more of the track on the right-hand side. But look at the throttle inputs. They're identical here, down here. They're, uh, it's literally on, a slight bit off, on, slight bit off. So I'm bouncing the throttles that come back on. Um, this one's significant, actually, coming up here on this next right-hander. So we're coming off. We're going to go on to the brakes now. And as we come through here, I go on the throttle extremely early, extremely early, on the red one versus the blue. The blue goes straight to 100% very quickly, and the red, and this is a sign that the car is turning in more, so I'm, I, I'm willing to accelerate earlier because the car is going to make the corner, and that's showing more confidence in the car, and that's why I expected in the Coach Dave Academy setup. It does it oversteer a bit more, which does mean that as I go on the power, the car will rotate a little bit with that rear end, um, and that also suggests that in, in here as well. So yeah, on the throttle very much earlier, 
And I'll look at the speed difference. I did talk about speed difference again at the exit of a corner in the previous segment. And you can see that there. 102 on the left versus 106 on the right hand side. So this is actually really good. <laughs> I really, really like this circuit tools. You just got a live review there because I wasn't sure what to expect. And you saw how quickly I loaded the files in. I understood the files very quickly with the top left hand side. I can change lots of things down in the bottom left as well. And it just loaded the footage right there in front of you uh, and does align the laps which I did not know it even did that. I did not know it aligned the laps. I thought it was just show the differences there, but it does. So yeah, that's uh, that's a superb piece of software there from Race Logic with the Vivebox Sim and the Circuit Tools. So yeah, shout out to them for that. If you do want to buy it, you can check it out on Steam, 99.99. It is expensive. I'm not denying that. That's a very expensive piece of uh, software there. You know, it's more than the games itself. Uh, but you know, if you're into this kind of stuff, then it's uh, very worthwhile doing. And it is what they use in real life racing. So here we are with me doing some real life racing. So I'm in a Formula 3000 car at the moment. I'm just getting used to the car. I'm just getting used to the circuit. I'd never been on this circuit before. Uh, and it was great just to get out there. Now, this is at Palmer Sport. One thing I would always recommend, and I always say this, is if you get the chance to do a Palmer Sport event, go and do it. It's great fun. It's very expensive if you pay for it, but if you get the opportunity like I did here, I went and did it. I did it twice, actually. This was the semi-finals, uh, and then I did the finals as well. So you get a little bit of oversteer there, mid-corner. That's always good fun. So getting back to the point of this video, okay, what I want to talk about is the fact that it's very easy to find ways to improve. It's very hard to get those ideas initially. And that's the whole point of this video. I've talked about breaking a lap down, you know, looking at it sector by sector. What I did in GT Academy 2011 to improve, and it worked. I improved, I made it into the top 20, top 10 in the UK, uh, and literally was improving all the time. I then took the, the ideas and knowledge I had from a pad into a wheel and improved a bit more. You know, you can break down sectors even in GT7. You can follow ghosts. You can look at replays. They are all very helpful. And then we jump to the Race Logic VBOX Sim software there, where it aligned it up. And you could see again the different throttle inputs, the different brake inputs. And knowing that data can actually be very significant. When I was at the European boot camp, we looked at that data. And I wish, I wish so much that I could have looked at the data for even longer. Because that was one area where I lost out at GT Academy. I'm very good at looking at data, looking at it in depth, and then applying that information. At GT Academy, in the European boot camp, we got literally like a few minutes. So I had to focus on one thing. At the time, they said, focus on your braking. Guess what? I focused on my braking and I improved. If I'd have had a lot more information, like you can see now just in the background with that screenshot, um, I would have been able to improve even more. And RaceLogic do some stuff for real life things as well. So looking at this screen freeze in the background, sorry, it's not more clearer, but essentially I couldn't find the raw footage and I had to use my video that I rendered uh, and this is where I finished it. But at the top, you can see speed, the speed difference is there. So the pro lap is in blue, I'm in red. So going into turn number one, I can quite clearly see there Jolly and Palmer, who this lap is against, uh, they're braking harder, but our speeds are not too far different there, to be honest, in terms of mid corner. Jolion carrying a bit more speed on every single corner. So I would use that and take that and then literally apply it next time I came to Palmer Sport. And that's what I really want to do. I want to go back and really try and improve here. If you look at the throttle then, the second one down, going into turn one, Jolion straight off the throttle there. I'm on it for longer. So I'm out breaking myself. I'm going in too quick into the corner. So I need to back out of that there. You can see that. So that is it in terms of this video then. I do hope you've enjoyed this video looking at the breakdowns, how I've improved over time, how I continue to try and improve as a driver, as well as a look at the RaceLogic VBOX Sim. I am actually off to their event in the coming weeks, so do keep an eye out on the channel as we're doing some R-Factor races, uh, which could be interesting, so I do need to improve on R-Factor because I've not played it in quite some time. But do keep an eye out for that. Should be an interesting event as well with some other creators. Again, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, do give it a like. Subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. And a big thank you once again for watching. And I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.